Hi, welcome to Forge Drops. This is Gideon Silva, the uh, Forge Specialist for Clemson Universe, and today I'll be talking about Sun Hemp. So let's get started. So Sun Hemp is a warm season legume that uh, can grow up to six or five to six uh, feet tall, and it grows better in uh, well-drained soils uh, in the optimal pH rains uh, from 5.5 to uh, even 8. Uh, they can tolerate some areas with pH uh, close to 8. So it does tolerate uh, drought, prolonged drought periods, but can struggle if the that period happens on the establishment just because uh, once it's, it's still uh, small, it's going to um, have more difficult to go through that period without uh, access to uh, enough moisture in the soil and water. Generally for our uh, region here in South Carolina, we would be uh, looking at planting window that goes from uh, April through uh, June, ideally, just so we, you can have the benefit of um, utilizing the full growing season for the crop, but sometimes, uh, depending on how much you really need by additional forage, additional biomass, you could potentially uh, be looking at planting in July, even late Ju July, just understanding that uh, the period of usage, usage of the forage is going to be probably just for a couple of months uh, at the most. Uh, just a general rule of thumb, we can plant once the soil temperature rates um, over 65. And uh, there are a couple of varieties that uh, were developed uh, by Auburn Universe, the AU Goat and the Darby. But uh, finding those seeds can be a little bit challenging uh, some years just because seed production is not yet on the food capacity. So uh, most of the varieties that we have access are just uh, varieties coming from uh, other countries. I do, uh, most, most of them from South America or Asia. And uh, this plant has a potential to fix uh, nitrogen up to 100 pounds or so of nitrogen per hectare per year. And uh, generally, uh, what we would see in terms of crude protein, it's going to be around 20%. Uh, it really depends on the management that you're doing for juice crop, especially uh, after it starts to really put the um, stock and uh, the uh, seam starts to harden. So this will be affecting not only the crude protein concentration, but also the digestibility uh, that we can get from that forage. So once, uh, once that soil temperature has reached around 65 uh, degrees and uh, you are planning on plant your uh, Sunham field, uh, you do need to do a good job preparing that seed bed. And uh, the general recommendation for seed rate will be between 20 and 30 pounds of per live seeds, just depending on how you're going to plant uh, that crop. And uh, also, um, if you're only going to plant as in monoculture or in mixtures, you can change that seed rate depending on that. So for, for cases where you'd like to mix sun hemp with uh, permillate, sorghum, or some other uh, forage, please reach out to your extension, your local extension agent so uh, they, uh, they can provide you with a proper recommendation on that. Something that's really important is uh, to inoculate your seeds, sometimes the legume. So uh, you need to uh, be making sure that you are going to uh, inoculate the seeds before planting, just to be able to get that benefit of the nitrogen fixation. Uh, and the type of uh, inoculant that you're going to use is just a cowpea type um, that you can buy on your regular um, agricultural uh, shop or cooperative. 
in terms of the seeding depth, uh, we are going to be looking between a fourth to one inch depth, just to uh, just based on the the sizes of the seed and really uh, how to do uh, better uh, with the establishment and. Uh, we do need to be applying P and K based on the soil test. So make sure that you're going to collect that soil sample and uh, send to the lab before you establish uh, your field. And um, nitrogen fertilizer is not required to, uh, to grow some hemp, but uh, it, it is a recommendation to put some as a starter just uh, at planting. So you can put uh, between 30 to 40 pounds there just to make sure that um, if the plant needs a little bit of uh, starter and um, will have access to that. Uh, then you can uh, generally, we would be managing just crop as uh, under grazing management, just because um, call, uh, harvesting for hay, once it really goes through the whole um, cycle of the plant will be a really tall plant around six feet with um, thick stems. So that's going to be challenging to dry. Uh, so generally uh, the recommendation is used for grazing and uh, we would be uh, using rotational grazing and starting that first grazing event when the plant is around 32 to 35 inches or uh, around four to five days after uh, you uh, planted. And then we need to make sure that we do not graze below 15 inches, just because if we do that, we would be affecting the growing point for the plant, which would um, impact the, the plant's ability to really grow back after that first uh, grazing event. And, uh, after that, we uh, the recommendation should really be able to give some rest for uh, for the the plant and uh, work that rotation out uh, so you can have the animals staying there for a short period of time, few days, and then uh, move into another paddock just to um, to allow the plant to recuperate that residual leaf uh, area before you turn the animals back in again. Uh, with that, I would like to just uh, thank you for watching this, uh, this video. Here um, are the Facebook and YouTube, YouTube channels uh, that I have, the forage drops. Uh, you can have more access to more forages information there. Um, especially these videos, um, we, I have weekly videos um, being released on different forages, on different managements and different concepts related to forages and animal um, topics. So just make sure that you check what's available there and uh, please reach out to me on this email if you have any questions. Thank you.